Hey guys, what's up? This is Shannon, Chief Instructor in Nomad Krav Maga. I'm joined here with Mike. We're gonna be talking about a very common style of assault, especially if the person is unarmed and they are trying to kill you. This could also be a like a domination tactic that they want to try to assert their dominance over their victim. We're gonna talk about front strangle and how do you defend that. All right guys, so the technique is gonna look like this. I'm gonna talk about it uh, in detail after we demonstrate it for you. All right, so it looks like this. <laughs> All right, one more time from this angle. All right, guys, so as you can see, let's flip angles here. The attack is a crime of passion. He's gonna take his hands, he's, he wants to feel that life draining out of you. He's choking your neck, looks like this. Ugh. All right, so initial reaction. Anytime I'm assaulted, I wanna think about the dangers of being struck in my face as well. So I want to immediately cover my head and tuck my chin. Why would I wanna do that? Because he may be bracing it, and then he's gonna use his other arm to start striking me. He might use both hands, head but boom. If I'm not covering my face like this with my Dracula shell, go ahead and throw that head butt. Go ahead and throw those punches. Bam, bam, right? This is one of the Nomad Krav Maga adaptations that I have uh, put into our Nomad Krav Maga system. If you've tr studied the traditional methods, there are more like this. Boom, putting that arm up straight and then rotating. Where's the downside of that? Where else in fighting would I be trying to defend myself and then all of a sudden, whoop, I put my arm up in the air? I don't recommend doing that. But where else in fighting might I be fighting and then whoop, I get into that Dracula shell cover. I want to protect my head. If I take a headbutt, if I take a punch to the face and I get knocked unconscious, I can't fight anymore. I need to protect my consciousness. I need to keep my computer on, all right? So I go, boom, my shoulders shrug, my chin goes down, I put a helmet in front of my head. Let's talk about the next step, all right? So the attack comes on, boom, cover my face. Now, whichever leg is in the rear, in this case it's my right leg, I'm gonna rotate that direction, hard and sharp. Boom, all right? If my other leg was in the rear, if I take another step, now it's my left leg, I rotate hard and sharp. Boom, all right, as you can see, the moment that I rotate this shoulder, it breaks that hand off of my throat. Then I have the other hand, primed and ready to capture his arms if they're still there. Just long enough to give him that elbow to the face. Restarting from the top, cover the face, rotate towards the back leg, drive the elbow down, capture the arm if they're there, and then attack him. At this point, guys, we need to think about what is our goal? What is the moment of the fight dictating? Can I just elbow him and run away? Yes, maybe I can. Might I require more follow-up techniques? Might it require that I just whomp, 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 and then I run all the way to the stratosphere to safety, all right? Maybe the follow-through action is critically important that you practice it based on differing levels of force necessary. Sometimes strike once, sometimes strikes twice, sometimes hit them until that threat is neutralized. In a real life situation, that's what you have to do. Continue to fight until the threat is neutralized with whatever you have to do. We're gonna go through it again all the way from the top. Always looking for your escape. All right guys, so we're gonna step this out. First part of the technique is that I wanna cover my face, I wanna dug my chin down, and I wanna shrug my shoulders. Just like this, go into that Dracula shell. Now, because I wanna get stability, if I'm already not with a dominant leg back or my support side back, anything like that, I wanna get into a strong stance, I wanna get a good foundation. So as I cover, I'm gonna go ahead and step back into a strong stance. Whichever foot goes back is gonna be dictated possibly by your reaction, by your training, or also even by the fight, meaning I'm getting pushed back. Whichever foot ends up being back, that's the one that you need to have back, all right? Once your foot is back, now the next step is you're gonna rotate sharply 90 degrees. So this rotation needs to be 90. 
if you don't rotate towards the rear leg, you're gonna, you're gonna get tied up. So it's really important whoop, that you rotate towards the rear leg. Now look at my feet. You can practice this without the, without the arms. Just practicing this 90 degree turn. All right, now third step. I'm here. One, two, three is gonna be to drop your elbow, whoop, clearing their arms off of your throat. So again, one, two, three. Now, four is gonna be finish. That's gonna be dictated by your fight and whatever you need to do. Generally, I like to throw this quick elbow to their face. I either run away as my step four, or I continue the fight. In this case, I turn with a side hammer fist. Get some good strikes in. Start looking for my dominant disengage. Last time through, nice and fluid. One, two, three, four. Finish dominant disengage. Always look to get home to safety as quickly as you can. All right guys, so some tips with this. While I'm teaching classes, I get asked a lot of questions, plus I see my students making common mistakes. One of the common ones that people ask me is they say, if I'm covering like this, how do I see? How do I know where my attacker is? There's a lot of answers to that, but the main one is that I need you to realize that fighting is tactile. If you are connected to them, you're in a clinch, they're grabbing onto you, you don't need to see them. You should be able to do this in the dark, all right? So if I got Mike here, look, as he's putting that attack on and I'm covering this, I can feel where he is. He's got his hands around my neck. I know where he's at. Now as I rotate, boom, and I drop it down, now look, I can hold on to his arms. I feel him. I can do this in the dark. I can do this blindfolded. Now I can just continue the fight. As long as I stay connected, I know where he's at. If he starts working and grabbing my legs, anything like this, I start working my wrestling. I start working, getting to the dominant angles. All of these things are gonna be key. The moment, if it was dark, if I couldn't see, I've got punched in the face. If he starts to lose connection with me and I can't disengage, if I can run, I need to find where he's at and I need to get, again, connected. Because what, it, what did I say again? Fighting is tactile. All right guys, I appreciate you watching that video. Until next time, make sure you click thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, continue to evolve limitless, train hard with Nomad Krav Maga.